Hello monsters and monster enthusiasts and welcome to the channel. So in today's video I am doing something really different and basically I wanted to document my attempt, an attempt being a really important word here, at restoring or at least painting in my old, my own way this old school Aki Goler mask. Uh, as you may know, I'm really used to draw faces, to do cosplay makeup on my face, but I never did anything similar and doing it like on a mask. So I thought the project was really interesting and I wanted to document it along the way. Also the reason for it is when I looked on the internet like for ways to do it, products to use and everything, uh, it was kind of hard to find really good uh, videos. I found some, but uh, obviously I want to do it more like in a do-it-yourself cosplay kind of way than trying to do it like for a very professional uh, piece of equipment that can be used in an actual Aki game and that you can uh, slam Aki Pox on it. So my goal here is not to do something that can actually use in an Aki game, but just something that can be done to display my to put my art on the mask and put the mask uh, on display doing it basically only for display purposes so before we jump into the subject just some quick reminders you can give a like and subscribe to the channel for more art related videos you can also follow me on instagram to see pictures of my makeups and my drawings and my other art projects and you can find the link in the description so now that's being said let's talk about the process so first, I just want to talk about how this project came about. So basically, uh, it started during the holidays when I went to my sister's house and it's actually my brother-in-law who came with the project because honestly, it's something that I never actually thought of doing. Uh, basically, he loved to go to garage sale and flea markets and stuff like that to find like some oddities, some old vintage items. And more recently, he started to collect some old-school uh, Aki Kohler mask. So uh, he came to me and said, well, I know, I, I see all your makeups and your drawing that you do and you post on Instagram, and I would really like if you would take one of those masks and put your, your own design on it, like to paint it yourself. At first, when he came with the idea, I was like, I'm not really sure that I'm the right person to do this, you know? I never painted with, like, actual paint. Uh, I do, I did a little bit of it with, uh, for my cosplays, but I never really did that. And, I mean, for my cosplay, it was always, like, just painting one color. Like, it was not like what I do with my drawings on my face paints. Uh, but the more we went through the discussion, I was like, you know what, I think on the other hand it's kind of a genius, gen, genius idea because it won't, be that, it won't be that different doing it on my face than doing it on the mask. Uh, and obviously I wanted earlier in my life, before I discovered like how to draw with Copic markers, I was interested about maybe trying paint a little bit and I think it's the kind of closest thing that I could get from doing face paint with another medium and being able to keep it. So I was like, yeah, that's a genuinely good idea, so I want to give it a try. Uh, obviously, a lot of the masks that he got are from, as I said, he got them like in garage sale, so they were already used a lot of the time, they were painted with very simple design and also very like uh, in a do-it-yourself kind of way. So uh, with this mask, when I received it, it was actually painted, there was actually a design on it. It was, and I will show picture later on in, in the video, uh, but basically it was, I don't know what, what it was painted, but it was some kind of very ordinary paint and it was also done uh, with uh, some designs and drawing done with like sharpie markers or something like that so obviously I said well you know I never did it so maybe I will screw up or something and he said yeah but take this one the design is kind of not really that interesting and, it, and what you will do I doubt that it will be worse than what's actually on it like okay yeah at least uh, there's some pressure uh, lifted on my shoulder and then I said okay well I will give it a try but keep in mind it's the first time I do it so uh, yeah that's how the project came about now that being said let's talk about the process of trying to restore it 
So now let's talk about I, how I removed the paint out of the mask. So uh, my original intent when I received the mask and everything was not to document it. The ID came along the way. So that's why uh, you see the mask with the paint already stripped off. Uh, but I took some picture of uh, the original design, so I'll show them. As you can see, uh, it was all everything in white and yellow seemed to be just some kind of acrylic paint or some like cheap household paint, and everything in black seemed to be done with uh, marker, like sharpie markers. So uh, when I came back home, uh, I decided to try with some household product. Uh, I know that rubbing alcohol can sometimes be used to remove uh, Sharpie and also to remove paint at the same time. So uh, I tried uh, on what was on the top of the mask. It wasn't really working. I mean, uh, I used 70% alcohol uh, swabs and uh, yes, it was removing some of the paint and marker, but not really enough. So then I tried using a, a spatula like this, like a scraper, took like the, the angle to chip up the paint. Uh, it was already flaking around the edge and it worked quite well. Then I realized that the mask had some history because there were actually three layers of paint and I will show it. So as you can see, you had two layers of white paint uh, and then you had what I think was the original color of the mask and the original paint job. It was like black and orange with some gold uh, glitters in it. Uh, so that seemed way more commercial, probably the one that the mask came with. And this one was also harder to remove. So, uh, but honestly, you just using the spatula, I was able to remove the three layers. But it was still tedious, so I decided to uh, wait. <laughs> so that that's what I tried like almost in the middle of the night, around midnight, uh, when I just came back home. But then uh, the day after, I looked on YouTube to get some idea on how to make it easier. And I uh, get back with my good cosplay buddy, the heat gun. So yes, I use the heat gun to heat the surface before scraping it with the spatula. So basically what I was doing is I was aiming the heat gun on a particular area, uh, pretty much all, almost the size of, or twice the size of the spatula, uh, holding it for around a minute. My heat gun come with five setting, uh, six settings, so I went with the fifth IS level of heat, keeping it for around one minute, and then uh, I would just use the spatula, go under uh, and lift it, so I was able to remove the three layers of paint pretty much at the same time. Honestly, it was way easier than I thought to remove the paint uh, using the heat gun, doing the old mask took me around f five or six hours. Uh, but then I... <laughs> I I had some issues when I came to this part. As I said, I started from the top, but when I came here, I was like, there's a big chunk that came out. I was like, am I just using too much heat? But then I realized, well, the mask already kind of got restored because there's some part that just seemed to be filled with putty. I don't know exactly what it is. It looks like a uh, uh, vehicle body uh, filler or something like that. So uh, it. Here, I obviously took the putty off without realizing it, without knowing it was there, but then I saw it uh, here. It also explained like with the, the scratches all around, they probably sanded it to make it smoother and more even, but uh, they probably use a really big grain, something probably like 60 or 80, uh, because it kind of scratched it pretty badly. The funny thing is on the other side, I kind of see that they probably put the putty uh, under the first layer of white paint because when they applied the second layer they were like eh no nah, screw that uh, i'll just paint over uh, the the holes I, I don't want to fill them so that's why you ended up with yellow paint uh, right in it so that was a really interesting part also discovering the kind of story behind this old mask as i was removing paint the main thing that i still have to do is to remove all the paint in the holes I've been able to remove most of it, but there is some places like this or like here that you can still see some of the original paint here. So uh, I will try to send it out and once I'm done, I will uh, also fill, try to fill the holes 
and then I will have to send it all uh, again. Uh, I already sanded most of it. I think that uh, for the first layer of paint, probably the manufacturer's paint, uh, it felt like there was some kind of rubbery primer, uh, almost felt like plastic dip. So uh, I used some uh, sandpaper. I don't remember exactly what I used. I think it was 120 or 180. Uh, but I've been able to remove the rest of the paint without scratching the mask. So uh, you still see a little bit of it here. But uh, yeah, so now that it's being sent it out, uh, we're ready to move to the other, to the next step. So I'm back again with my Aki Goler mask that I'm trying to restore and I just completed the step of filling the holes with putty and sending it. Uh, first of all, I have to say using putty was way harder than I thought. Uh, I, it was my first experience with putty, I listened to some tutorials, but the main thing that surprised me the most is how quick it dries. Uh, I thought I would maybe have uh, 15 or 20 minutes be before it totally dries down, but it was drying down uh, right after 5 minutes. So. Five minutes after I mixed the putty with the hardening paste, it was already getting hard like on the little uh, plastic plate that I had next to me that I was mixing it in. So yeah, it was way more challenging than I thought, but for that, it's not the best, but I did my best. For the big hole that was there, uh, I, uh, I don't know if you see it correctly on screen, but you see there's a little bit of texture left, probably some air bubbles that were in the putty. But uh, after I sanded it, I mean, when I just put my finger over it, I don't really feel any texture. So I'm, I think with the paint it, and the primer, it won't be that bad. Um, for the other side, it was quite challenging because here the hole, you can still see a little bit here of the hole. Uh, it was on the ridge of the mask here, so uh, it was really hard for applying the putty, like with a spatula or something. So uh, at the end, I ended up using like uh, popsicles, popsicle sticks uh, to apply the putty instead of like the metal spatula. Uh, in tutorial, obviously they were uh, applying putty like on a bit for covering a big hole on a car for me it was really small hole so uh, it ended up being uh, better with the popsicle sticks and uh, honestly at the end I just took my finger uh, especially for here obviously I was wearing gloves like latex glove or nitrile glove I'm not really sure what it was but then that's how I applied the putty uh, also I realized that I needed another tool to try to remove more of the paint that are in the holes as you can see it's not perfect there is still some paint left so you see like those black spot but it's still way better than it was and I just bought like this little uh, file set at the hardware store as you can see there's one that I really use more than the other the semicircular one so I was just going in the holes sending it like that to try to remove even more uh, paint so with the putty, once it's dried, I sanded it using uh, uh, 220 uh, sandpaper and uh, it did pretty great, honestly. Remember that these bigger scratches were already there, uh, done probably from the previous time they applied putty. So that's why you see two colors of putty. This is mine, this is the, the one that was already there. But yeah, with the two, uh, 220 sandpaper, it did a pretty great job. And then afterward, I used a 400 sandpaper and went over all of the mask uh, with it. Um, then I took like a damp cloth to remove like the dust from uh, sanding the mask. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty confident when the mask was still a little bit wet, I really was feeling a difference in texture. I felt like it was gripping a little bit more. So uh, I, I do think it's a good sign for when I will applying the, the primer and the paint. So the next step will be to apply my primer. I, I will try using regular gesso. So uh, I'll do it and I'll come back to tell you how it was and if it worked. 
So I'm back, back, back again with my hockey color mask after I primed it with gesso. Uh, I was really nervous about this step because uh, when I was doing cosplay, I once tried to uh, prep and paint some props that were made out of silicon and nothing would stick to it. So I was afraid to get something similar with a fiberglass. So I first tried the inside of the mask, applying the gesso. Uh, the mask, well, I, I haven't sanded the inside of the mask or anything, so you can see like there were still, I don't know why, but like splatters of paint inside of it. It was kind of dirty. So I first tried um, the gesso inside of the mask to see if it would stick and how much it would cover. And I realized, well, okay, for the coverings, it's not that great, so I will obviously need to apply more than one layer. But uh, for the stickiness, how much it would stick to the fiberglass, it seemed to be to do just fine. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm ready to paint the other side. So as I said, I used this uh, Liquitex uh, gesso made for acrylics that I got from the art supply store, and I applied three coats of it using uh, regular uh, brushes. So this brush was really great for uh, filling the inside of the holes here. Uh, the thing that I realized is for the spot that had some texture, like where I applied putty or near uh, putty was applied, uh, the gesso helped a little bit to correct the texture, but not enough to fully cover it. Um, the gesso, since it's white, it seemed to emphasize some of the small little holes that were in the mask that appeared like black spot. But let's say this is a hole that I want to cover. So I realized that if I was applying the gesso like that, I would not be able to fill the holes or anything. So I had to take the gesso, pat it, pat the brush over the hole, and then let it dry and uh, it would be fine. So obviously it meant that the texture was a little bit more irregular, but that's why I tried to fill the holes uh, on the two first layer and the last layer was really to try to uh, even things out. Uh, I haven't sanded it after applying the three layer. My go uh, I fear that if I sand it even more or I will accentuate the texture or it will um, make it, maybe make it too smooth so I think I'll just let it there. I mean, the texture is not that bad, it's quite even. Um, so I applied three layer, I let it dry at least for one hour between each layer, and at the end I let it dry for at least 24 hours. The thing that was making, making me worried is that I felt that if I would just uh, take my nail, I was able to remove some of the gesso uh, in the first 24 hours. But then once it's all dried up, it's now harder and I can rub my fingernails on it without removing any of the gesso if I I mean I can I still can remove the gesso with my fingernail but I really have to go hard so for me it's enough it's okay but obviously if I would do the job for a professional uh, goaler or something somebody who would get hockey puck slammed on the mask uh, obviously I think the gesso would be maybe a little too fragile as I said it's for display purposes only and I think it will be fine. So now I'm done with this, the next step will be to draw the design on the mask and then to paint it. So I'm really excited about this step, a little bit worried as well, but yeah, I will keep you updated on that. So I'm back again with my hockey goaler mask, now with my design sketched on it. Basically, to trace it, I took a regular uh, 2H graphite pencil. I decided to go with 2H because I was afraid that HB or B or something softer would maybe stain or mix with the paint or smudge or something. So I went with 2H, something harder. It worked really well, it's dark enough for me to see. And also I did some tests and you can erase it just well on the gesso. I was afraid that it would remove the gesso or would get stuck in the gesso, but no, you can erase it pretty well. So I was really happy about it and it, took a lot of uh, weight out of my shoulders on that. Uh, then, uh, for the design, I decided to go uh, with an original creation, mostly trying to find a way to go around all of these holes that are in the way. Um, so yeah, I decided to go with an original design, something really Monster J art with a lot of teeth, with the big angry eyebrows and stuff like that. I basically took inspiration from two of the makeup that I already did. So for the bottom part, I took inspiration from my makeup of Vorinclex Voice of Hunger from Magic Gathering, especially with like 
the the small uh, teeth uh, at the top and the big jawline with the bigger teeth uh, on the bottom of the mouth. Obviously, I had to get creative uh, to make for uh, how the the jaw connect to the rest of the skull, and for the bottom part of the top. Uh, it's pretty much like an open brain with a lot of horns. I took inspiration from my makeup of a whiplash from Doom Eternal, especially like for the the open brain and everything. Uh, also, I wanted to put horn around here where you have th those kind of bends uh, uh, to make it more a little bit 3D. I will try with highlight and shading to make it pop even more. Uh, so uh, yes, I'm really curious to see how it will turn out. Uh, also, while sketching, I realized, especially like around here, that the mask is way more asymmetric than I thought. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was quite a challenge. Also, I don't really know why, but it was all harder to do it directly on the mask than what I normally do a makeup on my face. Uh, I just cannot put the mask on my face because it's a little bit too small. But uh, yeah, it was actually harder. Maybe I'm just too used to drawing my face, but uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit harder. Uh, the whole design took me around one hour. So uh, yeah, so now the next step will be to paint it with acrylics. I plan to use mostly shades of like orange, yellow or beige or something like this for the most of the skull and obviously the brain will be like pink, purple and red. So um, as I said, this is the first time I do it, so I want to try it on a piece of paper before. So I will redo my sketch, my design on a piece of paper, try to paint it uh, before uh, doing it on the mask at the end. So the next time you will see the mask, you will probably see the final result. And now it's time to show the final result. Are you ready? Da 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 da! So yeah, this is the final result. It took me a month of all of my spare time dedicated to this project. It took me a month to paint this with acrylic paints. As I said earlier, I had to learn how to paint with acrylics. So uh, basically, when I first thought that it would be kind of similar to what I do with body paint, but at the end it ended up looking way more like the way I paint with, uh, or I draw with markers. If I take the example of like this horn, uh, normally uh, with body paint I use like two colors and I can mix them together. Here what I had to do is to to, to mix four colors, like my highlight, my mid-tone, my mid-shade, and my darker shade. And then on the first two, I worked with really thin layers of paint that were a little bit see-through. So the two first layer, I was just basically putting the color and not really mixing them. And I was also using a hairdryer to dry them out. Uh, between each layer and then on the later layer like here I would go with my mid-tone all over it and then I would adjust the other parts uh, so yeah that's basically how I did I applied mostly uh, five or six layers of paint everywhere uh, maybe there's some way to get more efficient but yeah I worked at it pretty much the same way I would do with markers so that was kind of a surprise uh, so first uh, I started with uh, the teeth like I do with most of my makeups and drawings so I use masking tape uh, around the teeth so basically I apply the masking tape and cut uh, the shape of the teeth with a very thin exacto uh, knife the teeth went really well uh, I mean yellow is one of uh, I mean especially those kind of yellow they were really easy to blend and it was just like these all in the middle of the teeth that were kind of bothering but uh, yeah, right from the start, the teeth looked pretty neat and pointy and I was really happy about it. Then I moved to the brain. Uh, the brain alone took me around a week, more than a week to paint. Here instead, I just applied three layers of paint. Uh, as I said in other videos, especially with body paint, um, you have to know your colors and not all color will behave the same way. And especially with acrylic paint, you have color that are more opaque, some other are similar semi-transparent, some other are transparent, but with the color that I chose, uh, after three layers, I was like, you know what, they are way easier to blend than with the yellows and browns, and I'm pretty happy with the results, so I will just stay there, I feel that maybe I will overblend the colors if I, go, if I had another layer, so yeah, I stopped after three, but it still took me over a week to complete. 
Um, here you can also see one of the two main parts that I'm not really happy with the result. Uh, I tried to use a glazing medium to do like the shading on uh, behind the orns. Uh, and it went bad, it ended up looking way patchy, it's like the grey paint and the glazing medium didn't mix properly together and it ended up really looking patchy, so that I will have to try more with the glazing medium, I don't know what I did wrong, but uh, yeah, it didn't work the way I thought it would. Uh, so yeah, uh, then I completed the side horns, not, nothing really special to say about it. Then I did all the bones, so I started with the forehead. As I said, there were already some kind of bends in the mask, so I highlighted them to try to make things even more 3D. Then I did like the cheekbone area, then I did the jawline with all the, like those, that texture under the teeth, and then I completed this part here. Uh, I love that it kind of look a little bit 3D depending of some angle. I think the shading can is pretty nice on there. Uh, and between each part, I still, even if it's all the same color, I still use masking tape to cover each part. Like for this part here, I did use masking tape to cover this and this. Even if the same color sills, I have shading here and I don't have here. If I want to have those like sharp line, I still have to use masking tape. And then I, uh, pretty much like I do with my makeups and my drawing, I end up with black. Uh, here that's when the masking tape try of kind of betrayed me. Uh, I don't know why, masking tape went really well all along, but with the teeth, uh, sometimes I feel like paint went under it. Uh, especially with the nose, you kind of see it. I intended to have more sharp lines. I don't know why, I don't know if it's something with the black paint, but I think especially with the teeth, uh, covering each teeth, uh, I mean, on the top of the teeth, it's pretty narrow, so there's not a lot of surface for the masking tape to stick to. So I think it's just that maybe I would have to find another way of doing it, maybe not trying to do the whole uh, black part of the mouth in one go, but maybe working in a different way with the masking tape. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, how I painted the mask. Uh, you may have noticed that it's kind of matte. Uh, it's not varnished, uh, uh, not even a matte varnish. Uh, the reason is, as I said, it's a commission that I'm doing to someone else. And they said at the end that they don't want it to varnish because their uh, other pieces are not varnished and they want to keep the same feel. But personally, I would have preferred to varnish it. Uh, and like if I do a piece for myself, I will varnish it. So, but yeah, that I mean, I'm okay with that. It's just you have to be aware that maybe uh, the paint job is a little bit more at risk. But I mean, I still applied many layers of paint and I think it will be fine. Um, the thing is, as I said, this is for display purposes only and I had to do some research on the type of paint that you can use. Here it's fiberglass and I used water-based acrylic. Uh, from what I found on the internet, it is, it's supposed to work. But uh, if you would, if I would work for a um, more modern Aki Goler mask that would be used in a real game, uh, I would have to check for what type of paint that I can use and on what is the material used for the mask uh, because I know there's some interaction that doesn't that are not working but to be fair I'm not sure I know that generally water-based acrylics are pretty one of the safest option you should not use oil paints for these type of thing but uh, yeah I still haven't found out the best product to use to paint Golar masks so just a big disclaimer about this uh, it is as I said it's my first time my first first experiment I wanted to share what went well what went wrong so uh, yeah but yes at the end I'm really uh, happy uh, with the result I'm really happy on how it turned out it's very monster J art so uh, yeah it was it was not annoying or painful to do it was just so long I mean when I'm doing a makeup I mean it's pretty much the same area that I cover with body paint when I'm doing a makeup 
but normally I can do a makeup in a day, so I thought that maybe one day or two would be enough, but it was really not the case. So uh, maybe I will learn ways to become more efficient, but right now it took me over a month. So uh, I hope you really enjoyed the video, if so please feel free to give a like and subscribe to the channel for more art related uh, video and art tutorials. Also if you have any question about how I painted the mask, you can also leave it in the comments down below. So I hope to see you in another video, bye!